Hello and welcome. I'm Raghav and today we will learn about maps in Groovy and this will be very interesting and very easy and maps are another collection type in Groovy like we have learned about lists in the last session and maps is actually a key value pair. So in maps we have key value pair and this is an unordered collection so like list we have uh, in list we have ordered collection we had indexes that is not the case with maps it is unordered and here as i told you it is a key value so maps we define by these square brackets and then we give our key and then a colon and a value so for example i can say here i can give a square bracket and give a key as name and then a colon and i can give a value as the my name here so this is a map i can also give a comma and can add multiple keys and values here and if i say something like this in a square brackets i give just a colon so this will be an empty map so this is empty map and this is what a simple maps looks like i will show you some very easy practical examples and you will understand what exactly maps are so i will go to my project that we created earlier and I will do a right click on the package and go to new other search for groovy and select groovy type in case you are getting a option to select groovy class that is fine you can just go with it I will go next and here I will select class and give a name so I will say maps here you can give it any name and finish and here I will just remove the class I can do coding without using a class as well so here I will say def and I will give any name you can give any name I am saying employee and here this is going to be a map so I will give square brackets and I can start giving keys and values so I will say name and colon and I will give the value I will say name is John and then a comma and then I will say H and then again colon and value I will say 40 and because this is an integer I do not need to put quotes here and that's it now this is going to be a very simple map now you can also put this in multiple lines it is not necessary to have everything in the same line so I can also do something like this and now you can see this is our map which are, we have named as employee now if I want to print this I can just say print ln and the map name which is employee and I will do a right click run as groovy script and here you can see it is printing our map now if I want to access any element I can just say or I want to access any value from the map I can say employee dot and I can give the key name so for example I want to access name I will say dot name and I can also print this I will say print ln and I will run this and this should access the name which is John and it is working fine I can also say employee and in the square brackets I can give the key so I can also access the values like this I will run this and I am getting the name value here or I can say I will say print ln and I will give the map name and I will use the function get and I will give the key here so for example here I say age and this should get me the value for age and also I can say employee dot get at and give the key name this will also work so here again I will say age and this should also give me the value for age if I run this now let us see the output and you can see it is printing the age here so this is how you can access the values from a map I will also show you how can you iterate towards how can you iterate and get all the keys and values in a moment but for now let me show you some other interesting operations we can do with maps so if you want to get the size of the map or the uh, what, are, what are the number of elements in the map you can use the function size and if I print this I should get the size of our map Oh, sorry I will run this as a groovy script and yes I am getting two because there are two key value pairs in our map so you can get the size of a map like this and then if I want to add something in the map I will just give the map name and I will say dot 
input and the key and the value so for example I want to add city and the value is I just want to say the city is Paris and that's it it should get added to our map and I will print the map again to check if this is added I will say print ln and our map name and I will run this again and let us see the output and you can see city is added into our map so we can do something like this uh, I can also check the occurrence or the presence of a key or a value I can just say employee dot contains key and I can use the key name here and I can also similarly check the occurrence or existence of a value I will say employee dot contains value and I can give any value and check if it is existing in the map or not so I will say Paris here and this will give us true or false based on whether the value or the key is present and I will just print this out I will say print ln here and also I will print this output of this statement and this should give us true because it is existing in our map and Paris value is also there in our map so if I run this now you can see we are getting true for both of these statements so this is how you can check the presence of keys and values and then if you just want to uh, print the class of the maps uh, in Groovy or Java I can just say employee dot get class and I can also say get name in fact I think I do not need get name this should give me the class from where maps are implemented in Groovy or Java so if I run this now if I run this then let us see the output and it is showing us java.util.linked hash map so this is the class from where we can implement maps and then uh, you can also clone your map so for example I create a new variable called emp2 and I will say employee.clone so I'm using the clone function and this will clone the entire map into this new map which we have named emp2 and if I now print emp2 they should contain all the data that we had in employee map so I will run this and you can see it has all the data that we had in our original map so we can clone the maps and now let us see how when we can iterate through our map so if I say employee dot each and here you can see we have an option of each with closures and closures we have learned in an earlier session so if I do this I can use key and value keywords here and then I will use a hyphen and a arrow sign and then I can just access the keys and values using key and value so if I have to print I will say print ln and inside the print quotes I will have to use dollar sign outside print ln you can directly use key and value so here I will use dollar key and I also want to print the value and if I run this now it should print all the keys and values into uh, into the onto the console that we have in our map and you can see it is printing all the keys and values now you can also use I can say employee dot each with index so this is again another function each with index and again we have to create a closure here now here we can do the same thing I can use key value here but along with that I can also use index I can give it any name here I and now I will also have index position as well so if I say print ln in fact I can just copy this entire thing here and along with keys and values I can also access the index so for that I will say dollar I and this will also print our index so if I run this now it should print the index position as well and you can see it is printing the index as well so we have index 0 1 and 2 so this is how we can actually iterate with indexes otherwise as we have seen a normal map is not indexed but with this we can get the indexes as well now here we can also say I can say employee dot each and here 
this is again going to be a closure so I will say employee dot each and here I can just say entry and hyphen and uh, arrow and now I can access this using entry dot key and entry dot value so I can access the keys and values here as well I can say print ln I will say dollar entry dot key and dollar entry dot value this will again print our keys and values from the map so if I run this it is printing keys and values and of course we can use each with index as we have done earlier so I can use this as well and here I can just use a name for index for example i and I will say dollar i here and this will also print our index position so if I run this and I can say we can see here we are also getting indexes now I can also say for example I create a new map and here I give some simple values so for example I say a and value is 1 I say B and value is 2 so this is a very simple map and I can now say I will define a variable entries equals I will say map one dot entry set so this is a function where we can get the set of all the entries into our map from our map and now I can just say I can use this entries and I will say each and I'm going to use a closure here so I can say each and entry and now here I can say I will say assert entry dot key in and I can give the value of some um, keys or whatever values I want to check are there in the keys of the map so here I'm just checking with a and B and similarly I can say assert entry dot value in and here I'm saying one two and that's it so I'm just asserting the presence of all the keys and all the values and all the keys should be from this set and all the values should be from this set so if I run this let me check the output and there is no failure that means this is uh, true in case I just say something like I say here one two three and run this here also it is fine now because we are having one in the value of the map and two as well three is not there but that is fine because we are not checking uh, we are not saying that we are saying it the keys or the values should be from this set and that is true so that is why we are not getting any error now just in case I uh, give something which is not existing it will throw an error so this is how you can check the presence of keys and values from a set and also if I say I can clear my map I can say employee dot clear and if I try to print my employee map now I should get a empty map I will say I will run this and you can see we have got an empty map so you can clear your map like this and this is how you can work with maps in Groovy I hope this session was very useful I will meet you in the next session of Groovy Thank you for watching.